Hello, my name is Orest. I am a Ukrainian. However, this video is being shot in Belgrade, capital of Serbia. As you might know, currently there is war happening in Ukraine and our country have been invaded by Russian military forces and this war is already going through several months. Uh, despite the uh, great support of the entire Western world that Ukraine is enjoying, Serbia is still very reluctant to accuse Russian Federation in their actions. Anyway, I uh, decided to visit this country on my larger trip around the Balkan states where I am meeting different local authorities, uh, leaders, NGOs, establishing connection uh, with Ukraine. So Serbia was on the way between Bulgaria and Croatia and I thought it would be a good idea to stop here to have the feelings of the local population, the local atmosphere and project their relation on this current topic. But before that, of course, the best is to learn a little bit of the history of this country in order to understand better the entire situation. As you can see, there are many, many events and developments are happening in this rather nice waterfront. So, in order to check out the town, let's go up over there to the fortress. And this will be our starting point with um, maybe learning a little bit of the history of this country while walking through the main city of Serbia. Let's go! The steps takes us up the fortress. Whoa, that's still pretty some way to go. Ah, but in Ukraine we tell if you like to ride, then learn how to carry your you know, truck or cart. <sighs> Which means you have to do some efforts before enjoying the result of your work. I'm sure the view will be amazing and it will be worth it. This is insanely strategic position. Just over here you see the confluence of two large rivers in southeastern Europe. Actually this is Sava and there is the main flow of Danube which starts in Germany and then flows across entire Europe falling somewhere there into the Black Sea. Singidunum was a major urban center in those areas and in generally, you know, uh, the area of modern Serbia played a vital role in, in the Roman Empire because I'm not sure if you know, but a um, second amount of Roman emperors were actually born in the modern day Serbia. So you can realize how crucial this area was. In the north was Dacia uh, with the present day Romania where I was already just invite you to uh, to see that uh, that video. East was Thrace, yeah, another province of Roman Empire in modern day Bulgaria and so on. However, with the fall of Roman Empire, uh, many different tribes used to visit those places and eventually Slavs arrived on the banks of Danube, of Sava, all the way back in the middle of the first millennium. They have seen this amazing fortress, or at least what remained from it, yes, maybe something like this over there, and thought, okay, let it be our new home, and gave the name Belygrad, which means, uh, I am as Ukrainian understand it, Beli means white, Grad is city, so white city which the name goes from the color of the stone which uh, they notice here uh, during those times. So since then Belgrade was starting to play a vital role in the history of the area and of course in the history of, of modern Serbia. Now it is a huge huge city which really extends all the way until the skyline guys yes the population is over one and a half million people and really the city is massive the location here is also very strategic 
is of vital importance and obviously all type of empires, countries, conquerors during the centuries of its existence wanted to grab its hand on this crucial position. At some point in the Middle Ages, Belgrade used to serve as the capital of Serbian principality. However, it was rather local power here in the Balkans. But the real changes came in 15th century when the expanding Ottoman Empire occupied Serbia together with the rest of the Balkans, imposing its strict law, which lasted here for the next at least four centuries. So the most of the fortifications that you see here were developed during the uh, Osman, uh, Osman time. And uh, there is a pure reason for that. Just across the river was the land of Austria or Hungarian kingdom, depending uh, on the year. So, uh, so it was very, very important position. And locals even tell that approximately like on this sp space there was a, a dominant like piedestal or another like resting place <laughs> we can imagine according to this chair that some turkish general or the vizier was sitting or even the sultan and from this dominating hill watching over the plains of vojvodina which is the modern northern part of serbia thinking how to conquer Europe, how to get into there. And you know, historically there were attempts, probably the furthest Osman uh, army went was uh, Vienna, and there's a famous siege which was documented well, happened in the uh, second half of the 17th century, which was actually the furthest the Turkish army went. But the main struggle was basically happening on this borderland. So you could imagine Belgrade was swapping from one power to another like dozens of times even. And basically the city could not even develop properly in the urban scale because it was always in the middle of a huge struggle. On the contrary, what was really developing are the fortifications. So the, the, the Belgrade fortress is simply massive. Here you can see one of the entrances, in my case is the exit, yes. Also different expositions of military facilities from all the different centuries. And yeah, this is like one part, there is a park, another like defensive wall. And if we continue over here, we can also see, guys, yes, that it really extends in all different directions. So basically, this is one of the largest fortresses I've seen. And uh, the reason for that, as I told, is very simple. I mean, it's complicated, but it's explainable. The confluence of Sava and Danube, the location where Belgrade is situated, was the everlasting struggle for many, many centuries between the Ottoman Empire and the European powers. So basically, Serbs found themselves in the middle of, of this huge escalation for many, many years and many generations. The defensive walls are so huge that there is even the entire sports section in between them two basketball yards, then there is something else. And you see one admin building. And also, yeah, we have to go around to leave the fortress. Some people might even get lost over here. And this is probably my favorite part of the fortress because there are two nice tennis courts in this amazing location. I'm not sure if you are aware, guys, but I am a a semi-pro tennis player being pretty a eh, decent level also competing in ITF tournaments whenever it's possible so if you play tennis and uh, you are confident in it please invite me I'll be happy to have a match with you depending on the location where it is will be possible situation began to change dramatically through the 19th century 
as you might know from history, this was the time of the rise of nationalism in uh, different local countries throughout the Eastern Europe. Nationalism, obviously, in a good sense of this word, because simply uh, different ethnical groups, nationalities, uh, started to develop their own identity and obviously strive for independence in relation to the opposing uh, imperial powers that were imposed on them from larger uh, empires. So basically, uh, Osman Empire was kind of on the decline and Serbia became one of the first countries that um, successfully initiated a revolution uh, getting more and more independence. As a result of several wars throughout the 19th century, uh, Serbia together with neighboring Bulgaria and Romania became independent state uh, that in the previous centuries were fully incorporated over vassals of the Osman Empire. Obviously, that would not be possible without the support of other great powers that were uh, opposing the influence of Osman Empire in Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, among them, uh, France was a great supporter, but uh, also Serbia was relying a lot on uh, Russian military and diplomatic support, which was a great rival of Turkey in the Black Sea area. So now we are walking next to the souvenir stands and I'm also will be trying to look for some identification of uh, this brother's connection that I've seen on uh, videos before. So these are the different Dobrodan souvenirs. Very interesting, mostly different Serbian symbolic. Uh -huh. Belgrade, nice Tesla some football clubs and that's it so I'm happy I didn't see what, 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 what I was mostly afraid of here I also don't see this and here mostly yeah only like I see different national symbolic very good because in some videos I seen that you can buy Russian souvenirs over here Thanks God, I didn't found them. What I see instead is an amazing pedestrian avenue, which actually marks the start of the old town of Belgrade. It's a beautiful location, very European style, and uh, probably that area got developed uh, when uh, Serbia became independent, giving it actually extra resources. When the country became independent, obviously it got more resources to build things up the way they wanted it to, to have. And that's what we see. Very, very nice avenue with some modern shopping mall, with historical buildings dating back from the 19th century. People are walking by, being relaxed. Some souvenirs also were here, traditional handmade clothing, very also kind of similar to the thing we have in Ukraine, at least in Lviv. Hvala, hvala and very very easy going normal atmosphere very typical very european something that everybody would expect to see in a modern european city in addition to historical architecture we also see some replicas of a modern development actually uh, i stay in that area guys we are going to visit it probably in the end of our uh, tour which also shows the perspective of the country where it's leading and uh, the presence of investment already tells a lot the more i walk through the central part of belgrade further from the fortress the more imposing the structures become just take a look at this that already feels like somewhere in Budapest or Vienna. Absolutely showing us that, guys, we are in the middle of the capital city. Huge, nice art deco or late classical buildings. Well-maintained, well-designed pedestrian area. Very, very good feel over here. Absolutely. By the end of the 19th century, Serbia was already pretty much developed as the regional power here in the southeastern or Balkan area. 
and different ideas of Pan-Slavinism started to appear as being the most numerous South Slavic nations. They took a lead in this direction of kind of trying to unite uh, Slavic people of the Balkans under one umbrella and this involved a lot of discussions obviously all the way until now. This is the point where we should probably stop to recharge, to eat. The cuisine in, in Serbia is amazing, coffee is very tasty and um, yeah, that just like really reminds me of, even of my native city Lviv with the atmosphere all around, having this like rather central European feel as opposed to former Eastern, yeah? Let's refill the water. It's amazing to see such fountains in the middle of the city and we are good to go. Further into town, the architecture is evolving. This shows us that we are moving into the 20th century. 20th century of Serbia that is closely related to other South Slavic formation. Obviously you know what I'm talking about. So after the First World War, the conditions became possible for South Slavs to connect with each other. And uh, one of the results of the First World War was the formation of a newly South Slavic states, the Kingdom of Slovenes, Croats and, and Serbs. As I told previously, uh, Serbs were the largest populated ethnical group of South Slavs in those areas. So basically, they uh, affected most of the local political movements in those countries. By the 30s, the kingdom of the three nations was renamed into Yugoslavia, which from the Serbian language means Yugo, South Slavia Slavic, so the South Slavia, a yeah, South Slavic country. And later on, after the World War II, uh, we all know the story of Yugoslavia, which was also a relatively prosperous country, balancing between the East and West, not uh, falling under the jurisdiction of the Soviet Union, but also maintaining relations with the uh, democratic uh, capitalist Western countries. In the second half of the 20th century, after the World War II, uh, the Yugoslavia was also uh, politically and militarily dominating by the Serbian population. Many of the Serbian initiatives in the 20th century were backed by Russia. And this is the monument to the last Russian Tsar, Nicholas II. He is the one who actually was executed by uh, Bolsheviks during the revolution. Uh, just after the World War I. But in this very war, Russia being a superior Slavic and much stronger state, was the close and important ally of Serbia on those territories. So I kind of understand the connection between Serbs and Russians because of the ethnical roots. We, they were, and actually Ukrainians are Slavs, the faith, Orthodox religion and of course the big game of the politics. It was in the interest of Russia to have a relatively stronger, rather minor ally in other areas of influence that could leverage the balance of power. However, when I see such signs on the street, which resemble terror and tragedy that Russian forces are now committing in Ukraine, this makes me very sad. But if we look closer a little bit, we see it's written Net Vojne, which means no war, which also puts a hope that uh, there are absolutely different points of view against Russian forces in the support of Ukraine and uh, gives more understanding that the local society in Serbia might be polarized in relation to present times, history and the future development of their country. 
seeing this painting makes me not only sad but also worries a lot guys so uh, there is this crazy guy and a word written next to it which is brat in serbian same as in ukrainian brat and in russian brat means brother the eyes of putin are painted and the letter b is also kind of with blood wanted to be deleted so uh, this shows us that there is discussion in the society here and people have different points of view i understand and those historical facts that i told today makes many people to understand why why serbians are so related uh, to russians and why they build these kind of relations <sighs> russia always try to impose themselves as the brotherhood nation of all the other slavs and actually one of the reasons to invade ukraine at the moment is liberation so you see what kind of liberation is happening they are killing simply civilians tens of thousands of people already died in ukraine and there is nothing to do with liberation at all it is a pure occupational war they are the kind of guys who play until it's beneficial to them and so far the history showed that serbia was a very comfortable partner for russia to affect the geopolitics in southeastern europe and around the balkans however guys my grandmother always were telling me don't believe to moscovitz don't believe to russia as soon as their foot step on your land you like really feel the consequences uh, i'll tell you my personal story i am from western ukraine from lviv and the, our geographical areas never were affiliated never connected to russian influence all the way until world war ii so as soon as russians invaded poland back then within two years they executed and sent to gulags hundreds of thousands of people brother is not coming like this to their own brother so uh, this is just one example what could happen and i would like to warn many serbians yes and i would like to deliver this message that do like my grandmother were telling don't believe to russians because this can go very bad unfortunately we see this is not uh, a fantasy after everything what is being done in ukraine and uh, ukraine now is serving effectively as the shield of the free world if ukraine god forbid will fall your neighboring countries guys can be the next and who knows how far the russians can go so stay away from them on the distance of your hand as we tell in ukraine please research the topic more and don't make the mistakes that many ukrainians did before thinking that russians are brothers guys i can assure you they are not looking at the active streets and squares of belgrade nice and tidy i see a prospective modern country it's nice to see that the country is developing that eventually you received guys the candidate status to join the eu the same as ukrainian this actually not long time ago and this is the healthy procedure like good way to join the society of the most prosperous and progressive countries russia is not going that way they remain in the 19th century with this expansionist imperial ideas this is not the way that people act in the 21st century nowadays and many things what i've seen here in belgrade in serbia indicate that the country is moving towards the right direction this feel like a complete europe and this calm situation this well organized pedestrian space this are just the part of the values that are so important to european society 
and what puts the human first because this is the biggest essence Walking around Belgrade, uh, I met my good friend Georgie. Georgie, hello. Hello. Georgie, you're local, right? As I understand. You're living in Belgrade. Yes, I was born and uh, living in Belgrade all my life. Uh, just for you to know that the last time, and actually the first time we met, it was February on the trip to Karabakh, a conflict area in the Caucasus Mountains where together with a group of other high-profile travelers because both of us... Like how many countries did you visit? Uh, 115 or 14, I'm not sure. Okay, wow, that's pretty impressive. I, I've been to 129 countries. So that was a trip where we explored the crisis area and uh, of the post-Soviet uh, region. And this was exactly one week before the war in Ukraine started. So I really remember the trip very well. And uh, obviously it was nice uh, to see you. And since then we maintain relations. So now when I was walking around Bel Belgrade, I went through the history, I kind of um, shared my opinions and my observations with you guys. I would like to ask the local, like what, what the tendency is now? Like where the country is going? Since I understand you work in the in the ministry that is closely related to the uh, Euro integration process of Serbia. Yes, I'm working at uh, Ministry of Justice Department for EU integration. It is uh, especially focused uh, only on EU integration, not uh, on uh, international cooperation. Although we have some similar works to do. Uh, as you mentioned, you. Uh, you and I met at uh, Nagorno-Karabakh region uh, their situation was uh, very tense uh, not only for situation on the ground but also because of the fear of the uh, full-scale invasion of Ukraine uh, and uh, it was very very nice experience uh, to, to meet you and uh, to show you some local attractions here also in Belgrade uh, we were lucky to meet uh, about your uh, question uh, uh, regarding uh, EU integration uh, I could say that uh, that became uh, the strategic goal for Serbia uh, in 2000 year 2000 when uh, last communist uh, or I can say semi-communist uh, government uh, lost the elections and uh, that process although it started with uh, full enthusiasm and uh, hope that Serbia will reach the EU full EU membership in next 10 uh, or uh, at least 15 years which were seven years ago <laughs> uh, it was more prolonged and uh, a lot of people lost that enthusiasm uh, in the uh, last 22 years. Uh, this was the first year when public opinion uh, uh, poll showed that uh, less than 50% at this moment uh, support EU integration process. Uh, but of course, that, uh, that, that is not uh, without any reason. Uh, the main uh, issue was uh, that the majority of EU countries, EU member countries, uh, accept unilaterally uh, proclaimed independence of the southern autonomous province of Serbia, uh, made by communists, which were you know, uh, which were uh, not based in any uh, historical document. You are talking about Kosovo now? Yes, yes. yes. So, um, what's um, the relation at the present time from Serbia to Russia? What's the relation? The relation is uh, very close uh, to Russia, uh, mostly because of the reasons uh, of the historical connection. Of course, not uh, all historical uh, uh, background is mentioned every day uh, there were uh, some bad and uh, 
excellent times in relations uh, but the, I think that uh, the uh, main reason for uh, that uh, because why are so good relations today are the also issue of Kosovo because uh, uh, they supported us uh, during the the worst days in 2008 mm -hmm. um, against those decisions and uh, they uh, defended also also on some other parts uh, mm -hmm. and discussions Serbian side uh, in UN Security Council and that's the reason why uh, connection is uh, stronger now than in maybe uh, past uh, 25 or 30 years you know like actually guys you see uh, i also spoke about the historical significance and the background of it on my walk uh, so it's like explainable many things but in my opinion what i see is that uh, russia might be using serbia to do the leverage and influence in this part of the world like it feel it might feel good connection and brotherhood on a distance but once you have russians like here it might doesn't feel like this well, how could you comment on that well my comment would be uh, that you are both uh, right and you are maybe also wrong because uh, as i said uh, there were good and bad moments and uh, serbs uh, mostly are attracted by idea of pan slavism and uh, like all uh, slavic nations so the reason why uh, Serbia currently haven't introduced sanctions to Russia uh, was not only uh, economic interest or uh, political, it was uh, also uh, because of that feeling uh, that the uh, uh, majority of Serbs, like they wanted to enter the EU, they uh, feel with other Slavic nations, even with Croats, with, uh, which we had some serious issues, uh, even the genocide in the Second World War. They don't feel it uh, like uh, like a real enemy. They see, uh, I also uh, see all Slavic uh, nations like some close brothers and sisters. Absolutely, like it does feel, and that's why I am like so familiar with everything in Serbia. But. <laughs> That's why we don't understand the current situation. I in am Ukraine. afraid. Yes. I am afraid. Russian panslavism means something different than well, panslavism to other people. That's, like. uh, uh, that's already some high policy. And I'm speaking from uh, <laughs> the ground and from the base. From this point of view, from here, as uh, some uh, you know, Russian average pan guy. Russian panslavians means absolute Russian yeah, domination. Yes. You you lived in the same country with them. We know. For 300 we, we years. So think of like Turkey was humiliating Serbians for like 400 years. Russians humiliating Ukrainians worse or also very bad f for more or less the same amount of time. Well, yes, I, I know some... And uh, I am afraid the idea of Russia in case of succeeding in Ukraine is to go further. And I'm very afraid that for many countries who still don't realize it fully, this can be a very bad lesson if they don't realize it now. One of the indications of uh, development of each country and city is not only infrastructure, not only politics, but also the art and culture. Uh, my wife Marta is uh, telling many times that uh, culture is a second diplomacy and for that reason we visited the uh, Contemporary Art Museum here in Belgrade, which is pretty impressive. So uh, I let my wife Marta talk more about this. Actually, the architecture of the museum is pretty awesome. I like Contemporary Art Museum because of their modern creative architecture. This art object is a uh, pet house and it's pretty famous, so let's put like this. And the concept is nice and uh, you can read it over there. So I came 
to this museum as usual to explore contemporary art and to understand the problematics and the main topics of the society which lives in the city and in the country. And I didn't expect to see here the exposition only of one artist artist basically he's not from here uh, he's from austria and he's very famous among um, contemporary art circles let's put like this he became uh, famous in 90s when he uh, introduced to the public his first um, project one minute sculpture and now we can see it here so it's interesting i don't see any references to russian propaganda or something like that and it, it it's it's great actually and uh, Okay, uh, let's let's explore more. <laughs> now I will know about this artist. Probably everything I need. Also, what I like in contemporary art museums, you have special uh, designated places you can rest and enjoy and to see the exposition, not only um, like standing far away. <laughs> You're allowed to touch something and to interact with something and just to lay down as far as does over there and enjoy some videos and, and sounds. How do you feel, Orest? Very good. Yeah. Do you start to like more contemporary art museums? <laughs> Great. The only one thing related to situation uh, with Ukraine and mentioning Russia is this uh, newspaper which is about politics, I can read some and I just translate it just to understand fully this text here so that's probably the only one related to Russia I found in the whole museum I, talking in my personal name just reading some newspapers, just seeing this Z even it's not Cyrillic, it's Latin and they are promoting what? I am personally ashamed to see these symbols on the streets of our, uh, our cities. Here in Belgrade, I was also uh, lucky enough to visit the conference, which is organized by the Embassy of Ukraine in Serbia and dedicated to project more information about Ukraine. So we had a fruitful discussions about how to establish more relations between Serbia and Ukraine and how to enhance more support from the society in Serbia, which is also a first step to improve our relations and generally together work for the best of the future of our countries and the future of Europe. As you can see, guys, the things are much more complicated than somebody might think. Well, history is something that teaches us a lot. And that's actually the best thing to, uh, to learn before making some kind of consequences. I realize that the scars will remain for such a long time. For example, here we can see the ruins of the Ministry of Defense which are still staying here for the last over than 20 years when NATO was bombing Serbia. They are kept here for people to remember what could be the consequences of war. And for many Serbians, this goes much deeper in their heart and soul than me might think. Obviously, on the other hand, on the other hand, obviously, there was a reason for that. And because of this very radical move the government in Serbia was changed and this country stood on the path of progress and development 20th century was cruel in Serbia and Balkans in general this as was described before the gunpowder of Europe exploded in 1914 here we see the monument of Havrilo Princip, the young Serbian who assassinated Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo, which actually started the World War I, following many different events which remained a tragedy for, for people. As for now, it feels like Serbia is on the rise. Country is becoming more modern, there are nice ambitious infrastructure projects this 
old railway station is also reinventing itself and the modern towers on the skyline are just another proving fact that the country will have a bright future. I really hope that people, society, politicians inside and outside Serbia will look back and make wise, proper resolutions and take the outcomes of the history with when it's actually possible to do the projection of future events. I hope that the process of unification of Europe will be continuing, which will put us in the position when all of us will be living peacefully within one geographical, political and economical union. I am finishing the video about Belgrade and Serbia from this amazing waterfront promenade on the bank of a mighty Sava river just enjoying a nice atmosphere and watching some yachts passing nearby with another new developments on the opposite side thanks for watching guys it was Orzup. it was kind of hard video for me to make so i'm open for constructive discussions please feel free to comment below and we'll carry on with that. In the meantime, if you somehow are not yet subscribed on my channel, please do so. Like this video if you found it useful. And if you would like to support our team in this media part what we are doing, also please consider supporting us. Just follow the link below this video. That's it for me. Um, I personally found Belgrade to be an amazing city. I'm super grateful for this chance to visit Serbia and uh, try to make a view on slightly different opinions that I'm used to in the recent time. However, the essence is something that you start realizing once you observe the world. Wish you all to be safe, wish you peace and obviously encourage everybody to stand firmly with Ukraine. See you in the upcoming videos. Good luck.